Hello everybody, welcome to the replay of the round of 16, 32s. 16, 32s. Yeah, 16. 16. Hey, <laughs> I knew that. Thank you, Purple Chat. <laughs> round of 16 match between Gdernik and his Wood Elves and Mankiz and his Chaos. Uh, we, we had Sweltering Heat. Mankiz chose to kick. Uh, won the toss and chose to kick. And in the booth with me is Purple Chest. Hello. Hello. Thrilled to be here, Jimmy. Uh, looking forward to this one. It's uh, it's a clash of styles, isn't it? It is a styles clash, yes. Um, if you're into your wrestling, we've just had WrestleMania, and this is indeed a styles clash. Fantastic stuff from Purple Chest there. Unintentionally. <laughs> I'm sure, but yeah, it is, it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's the classic, you know... Bash me dash. Yeah, it is, yeah, and like, and it's Chaos, right? So they're a bit worse than Dwarves or Chorfs, aren't they? Because they haven't got as much tackle. They've only got the one tackle on the team. Uh, very good at beating other Bash teams, which is the majority of a ladder, but could be a bit found wanting against these uh, disgusting Elfses. Yeah, really, really interesting first turn as well. Uh, the Chaos already two men's down. Uh, that's not the way they would have seen this starting. So they're going to be really pleased to get that KO and get the numbers slightly back more on uh, on turns. Yeah, just a mighty blow hit, of course. The claw is useless against everyone but the tree, and he only has the one piling on, so he's not really that bashy, is he? At the end of the day, when you think about it, he's not actually that bashy. No, I mean, it's slightly hybrid. He's also got a, a lovely uh, move up and agility up uh, beastman. Uh, a plus strength beastman. So there's there's all sorts of bits and bobs on this team. It's um, certainly not the pure bash that we see out of some Chaos teams. Yeah. <laughs> Which personally I quite like. I think if you're going to lean right into the claw pump, then the, in the current meta, probably Nurgle is the way to do it. I think Chaos uh, can control the field a bit more. Um, and can certainly still get the casualties done, but perhaps don't need to go quite so kill crazy. Mm. Which is more agility across the team, strength fall from every piece on blitzes, for example. You know, they've just got those uh, slightly better controlling yeah, options than they will do. Interesting stuff there. Of course, Nurgle often cited as the control team. I think that's well, bollocks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nurgle can, but then you need to really build exactly for that. Uh, it's known as a stymie build, isn't it? Where you try and lean into the foul appearance and disturbing presence, get yourself lots of tentacles, lots of stand firm, and just try and annoy people into submission. Uh, I, that's not how I'd build a Nurgle, but I've seen it done successfully. Yeah, not what I'd do, but who can say if it's right or wrong? It was now, done successfully on Fumble, famously by um, one person. Can't remember yes. the coach's name. But he did have two movement eight pesticles. So he did. <laughs> uh, unpronounceable team name, something along the line of Usivers and Klehalo. <laughs> uh, which probably means something in Scandinavian. Yeah. Which again, just in case, is all one country. I don't care what they say. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> um, now, to no one's great surprise here, the uh, the elves running away. Uh, the withdrawn offense, uh, trying to minimize the amount of damage, minimize the amount of hits, and always the opportunity to uh, to outflank if the opponent moves forward out of order. Oh, he doesn't pile on. He wants to keep that tackler free to react. But sticking four players on the tree, I guess that gives him the free knockdown if he stands him up. I guess that's the idea, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a choice trying to control the tree uh, rather than just completely ignore it. And obviously, it is going to hang around that line of scrimmage, so it probably does need dealing with. Mm. Um, and of course, it's already taken one chaos off the pitch, so perhaps he's he's just mindful that numbers-wise, if he keeps that tree controlled, he's in a slightly better spot. Not choosing so far to advance towards the Wood Elves, which is kind of what the Woodies want. If they can hang back and burn three or four turns, then their limited number of rerolls obviously can be maximum value on the, the two or three turns where they do try and break the line. Yeah. Why do I call it the withdrawal offense, Kinroth? Because you withdraw your team. You're still planning to have an offense, you're still planning to score, but you withdraw first, and then either the other team stays there and tries to find a defensive line that you can't break through, or they have to come pouring forwards. In which case, if they get out of position, you can find a way through or around them. Yeah, 
Kinroth, I'm not going into that again. <laughs> um. There's a there's a weak point here, isn't there? This stand there firm is. guy in the middle. Well, of course, he's down to nine numbers, so he can't have that uh, that lovely double line that is, uh, is certainly a standard answer to the withdrawn offense. Is uh, five sets of two coming forwards in good order. Yep. And, of course, that's so that if you take the uh, the front of this line down, then there's a second one behind that you need to do three dodges to get past. Um, and whilst, obviously, elves can uh, you know do that with a plus agility piece, or even without, or leap over with their dancers, the hope is that only a limited number get through, and then the back line behind all of the other pieces can sweep across to where they've chosen to break the line uh, and monster the people that have come through with the ball. Leaving the weak point in the middle obviously means that you can fold in from both flanks if that's where they choose to assault and come forward. Yes. Coming at them from both sides. Always effective. Absolutely. Yeah, if anything, Ortec, this will make this... Uh, this will be even more effective, an even more effective strategy in Blood Bowl 3 with... Uh, due to being able to stack reroll usage in one turn. Uh, of course, they will fear the attrition less. Um, so, you know, who knows? How Certainly one of my key fears for Blood Bowl 3 and the, you know, the new Blood Bowl 2020 rule set in general is that not playing Blood Bowl for quite a lot of the Blood Bowl game does seem to be um, quite hard-baked as a good idea into the rules. <laughs> yep. I'm just not sure that's good for the pastime. No. It's probably, I mean, the thing is, right, it probably doesn't matter for the pastime. Um, you know, it's made, Blood Bowl's made for a bunch of nerds that are all friends hanging around with beer and pretzels, isn't it? Um, the people playing on the internet are just not even... Glorious. Not even no, considered. I won't give in no, we're not, we're not relevant I'm to the Games Workshop and all that's for sure. And uh, I will defend. Although there's a lot of crossover. I will defend. A lot of people out there playing a lot of internet for games and then buying beavers. a lot of plastic and a lot of paint. Oh yeah. Which is where yeah. I believe Games Workshop makes most of its money. Yeah. And good luck to them. You know, they need to make money so that we get to play the game. Yeah. So the elves not going for the full-on withdrawal here. They could have uh, hung back another couple of turns if they really chose to. But instead, seeing some weaknesses in that line with the low number of chaos, they're already, as you can see, made themselves a nice little hole on the right. And now they've got an entire flank to go zooming up. Yeah. Chaos getting quite badly out of position early in this drive. Yeah, very much so. And thank you very much, Goblin6, for staying fantastic for 16 months. Four glorious beavers. Thank you very much. I need to reinstall the beaver immortal. <laughs> I've got a... Uh, I've got lots of... Lots of emotes to change after JFW. WrestleMania! I mean, a move tree is a fabulous piece to have, obviously. It doesn't have to roll to stand up. Um, it is quite bloaty, though. It, it does weigh in a lot of TV, so it does need to punch some weight or take some hits. And at the moment, it is. I mean, it's kind of relevant. Sometimes it's very hard to put get that tree or keep that tree in positions where it's really doing what that team value is asking it to do. Now, we were watching another High Elf game where I was talking about Strength 4 and the Frenzy piece. Um, and it having loads of uses and you know, keeping the sidelines honest. And uh, it, It's a nice piece to put Frenzy on Strength 4, obviously. Less chance of Frenzy trapping yourself. But there we're seeing the huge advantage of a Strength 4 piece without Frenzy. It's uh, very precision blitzing with that Strength 4 without needing assists that you're, then you're perhaps leaving in a non-ideal position. Uh, without needing a guard that then is at huge risk and able to move on afterwards as well. So he's, he's swapped sides here from the flank that I felt was open. Uh, he's moved back the other side. And again, perhaps that's to make the tree just a bit more relevant and make sure it's uh, both taking and giving hits. Yes. Yeah, this looks a bit more open now, doesn't it? He doesn't have to get too far forward as well. So this is, I mean, it is quite open, isn't it? So yeah, I quite like this. 
in the catcher. Well, you see that, Jimmy? We've only got two turns left. Um, he does need to make a lot of ground in the next two turns, but of course, Elves yeah. very capable of that. Yeah, he does. But then, by the same token, that makes a lot of these guys kind of irrelevant, doesn't it? So... Yeah, yeah. And the, you know, really importantly, the tree between where they are now and where they would really like to be at the end of the turn. Yep. There's some good 2D chess being played there. <laughs> People always talk about 3D chess. I don't know what that is. I've never seen a game of 3D chess. <laughs> that is a very good point. That is a cast catcher. And the apple, apple comes in instantly. Yeah, straight away in on that. I mean, uh, on a replay, he might have taken a minute and a half to think about it. But uh, <laughs> we, we don't know. Um, but I like the apple there. It's... It's spicy, but if you're going to win a chalice, sometimes you need to take those sorts of risks. A lot of people would feel that the Apo was for these two beautiful dancers alone and nobody else. Um, but I think Nick knows you need to team around them as well. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's a real good player, isn't it? And, and he needs the numbers for the... Uh... Like, it was only badly hurt, wasn't it? But that guarantees it working, that's the thing. Yes, the number of times I've put in an apothecary on uh, someone with a broken arm. And the apothecary said, well, you can have him dead instead if you want. <laughs> yep. Three D chess, the regular chess guru. I mean, when I've seen a chessboard, there's you can move in only two dimensions. Um, there isn't an up and down to chess. I suppose time you can count as a dimension. <laughs> the pieces are three dimensional. Aren't they? Yes, except on a computer screen. When they're not. <laughs> but they've got perspective to make them look three D. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've got a, a, a sideline cage here. The sidestep, of course, makes it incredibly safe. There's no way that the Chaos are filling the squares around it to surf, but they've got the agility piece to perhaps take a hit on it, but haven't chosen to. Still just trying to get some numbers back. It seems it feels kind of pointless, doesn't it? Like? Yeah, a bit of a fool's errand there, I'd have thought. If, you, if you're not trying to get some ball contact, and even then it's a, you know, it's a plus agility leaping dancer. Yeah, I think that's worth dodging in, no matter how difficult, and taking the hit. I, I absolutely agree. But it, I mean, if not, then I think you need to be looking at some, some you know, ultra violence towards a piece yeah. and try to make those numbers tell for the second half. And I'm not really sure we did either there, is the case. Yeah, that was a bit wishy washy, wasn't it? A bit wishy washy. However, Sean, as numbers as he was, very, very hard to defend against, defend against a nearly full elf team. Yeah. Yeah, to be fair. It was it was a rough, rough situation with Vandekis losing those two losing those two players straight away. But now he's got the double LOS and hits this could definitely cause some damage, couldn't it? And we could yeah, see he really needs to take some elves out on these uh these seven hits he'll get. Three on this line of scrimmage, three at the start of the second half, and then one blitz. And between those seven, you I really think he needs to get three elves off the pitch at least for the second half so that he can dominate that second half, get some more hits in, and be in a good place for overtime, maybe. Yep, let's see. A, we, we need to see a huge equity shift for Mankis. <laughs> yeah, I think we really do. I mean, th those dancers are so nasty with one plus agility and one plus strength that unless you can get the numbers down around the rest of the elf team, they can just stay safe behind a wall of dross and then come for you any time you're even the remotest bit out of shape. Yeah, that's the thing, Hortek. Like, I think a lot of the time, and it's funny because PC says that he thinks Elliot plays with himself in Chalice sometimes. I, f I feel like Elliot plays like that on ladder, you know, like to do the safe thing and not risk it a lot, and it pays off for him a lot on ladder. Uh, but yeah, I think in these kind of Chalice games, um, 
you've got to go for those players, those kind of players more because you know the uh, the players are good enough in Chalice that they will find like that wasn't a problem to solve. But if he'd given him a problem to solve, he would have solved the problem and his dice would have been easier than the fightless dodge, I think. Even if he'd given him problems, which he didn't. But you know, you know, you kind of get what I'm saying, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's. I mean, I. You know, I, I love, you know, I think Mankis is good at solving the problems he's been set so far. You know, he found a nice sort of defensive line, but then he got very out of shape. And instead of seeing that that change in momentum needed you know, a, a lucky answer from him, and at that point you've got to try things with lucky outcomes, um, he just thought if I, you know, if I create some minor issues, perhaps it'll be enough, and I never felt it was going to be. There's an old English expression in there, isn't there, that you'd... Uh, you may as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. Meaning that, yeah, if you're, you know, if it's for all the marbles, then sometimes you just got to go for it. You've got to take the big chance and see if it pays off. Yeah. Sorry, I haven't, I haven't been able to look at ch uh, chess. Be able to look at chat because been messing about with the emotes. But we've got we've got the beaver back and we've got potato back. I guess they're the biggest ones. I can't remember the ones that are missing. <laughs> that aren't them. <laughs> but we are missing a few emotes. But so for now you can enjoy Teresa Mame and Gorilla Mezzo and Rick and Elf and Crusher. So there you go. I mean, Hotel, yeah, that is that is exactly the point. Yeah. Um, that a five plus to cause a big problem is probably better than um, you know three th three two pluses to cause very very minor inconvenience. Yeah. Uh, particularly if you've got a reroll, you don't mind throwing at it. That's not terrible odds. <laughs> yeah, because it looks like he had this uh, one turn possibility maybe, but he has got minus movement as well as plus movement. Imagine dodge, so he wasn't really going to be able to one turn. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, to, to you, uh, obviously, those don't show on the client, so until you mouse over them, sometimes those minus moves are hard to see. Uh, I mean, a move six, uh, one turn against a tree, uh, pinning down the center of the line, which is very, very difficult without frenzy. Yeah. And so he didn't go for it. <laughs> And now we're in for the second round. He's done no damage. This double LOS has done nothing. No. Nope. And as I said, I think we needed some uh, some elves, not necessarily kills, just off the pitch. Yeah. Because it just creates the holes to get through to the better no, elves. I won't give in. Means they've got less draws to throw I'm into victorious. the charm to keep all the other players defend. out of the way when the good players I do will their defend. thing. So right now, it's a very Dear tough situation. Hello, our iOS. So how's the old Elliot Not two sat how today? Much he is still yeah. seeming to want to be uh, all around that tree. Yeah, he likes. I mean, it, it makes you know a lot of senseless chaos. To be fair, because you can just two dice easily with clone mighty, and you've got block. Like he's seventy five percent to put it down. You have very high chance to break its armor. So like, it yeah. always. It always gets you. <laughs> <It's> chaos. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's it's easy. It's a lot because it's a lot easier to take out as chaos. It's a lot more tempting to try to take it out, isn't it? It is, um, but it does form that that fulcrum around which the uh, you know, the wood elves can can know that you're going to have to put a lot of pieces in there. Um, the way he's put his elves in right now means getting those assists isn't as simple as it could be. Yeah. Um, and it is going to take several players to uh, to cause it problems. Another nice thing about this shape, Jimmy, I don't know if you noticed, between the tree and the, the advanced elves over on that left-hand side as we're looking, there's three Chaos Warriors cut off from the rest of the team. Yeah. That'd be worrying me if I was Chaos right now. Yeah, this is looking uh, nightmarish. So that's where the Blitz comes. To get yeah, them absolutely. Connected. He's opening a hole uh, and letting his men pour into it. Oh, baby. <laughs> it, entirely deliberate, obviously. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, great. Now, at least two of those Chaos Warriors can be rescued. And personally, I'd be leaving one on the tree and just trying to stop wanting to hit it so much. <laughs> Yes, he's going for the, uh, he's going for the, what's it called, uh, Vengabus. Yeah, the Vengabus. Um, so nicely built with the two guards on the back corners, meaning if you do leap in directly behind the ball carrier, you're at minus two. And obviously they protect its flanks. The, the driver in above the ball carrier means you need to leap someone in to cancel that as well as someone <laughs> to hit. 
but he's lacking guards on the front edge. Now, the one on that left means that anything coming in on the left obviously is going to be in at least one uh, guard zone. But on the right, he's a little bit out of shape unless this other guard uh, does a similar job to the Chaos Warrior on the left of the bus. And of course, uh, Nick has the two plus leap in to cancel the interior yep. assist, which he does. That's the thing there. So the he's cancelling with the AG4, and now the strength 4 comes in. And as I said, he's cancelled the front of the bus, and without a guard on that side, that gives him two die on the ball. Gets his pound, needed to re roll to do it. <laughs> yep. oh, oh, what a huge catch there from the Chaos Warrior. I mean, it, it doesn't solve all his problems by any means. But it does mean both of those dancers are in positions where they can be finally attacked. And at least the ball isn't on the ground, which against Elves is pretty much game over. Yep. And in the midst of all that, thank you very, very much, Dr. Mama Bosco, for staying fantastic for 49 months, four full years. 12 beaver pregnancies, absolutely glorious, thank you very much. Yeah, you're right Muppet, it was all four Chaos Warriors, and I think after he uh, he poked that hole, I think more of them needed to come back. Yeah, he dodged them all away, but they didn't come through to protect, which... Uh, no, no, which I thought was strange. Yeah. Oh, well he's got cast for his troubles. <laughs> Only badly hurt. Oh, he had an extra apple. Right. Nick had two apples. So hence the uh, the apo on that first casualty makes a lot more sense. But again, straight in with the apothecary on the uh, on the strength four there, which was it another badly hurt? Yeah, I don't like that so much because you know if nah, I guess it makes sense though, right? Because you're you're trying to get the turnover now, aren't you? You're fully yep. committed for the turnover, and if you get the yep. turnover, you turn up and you win. So maybe you don't app all that. And... Yeah, I mean, I exactly. I'm not sure it's needed, and it puts a lot of elves at risk for the rest of this game. Yeah. But on the other hand, of course, if he does stabilise now and it goes to overtime, you're very happy to have that dancer. So yes, yeah. it's a tough decision. That is his, to make that is his hole sense. maker, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, he wants the agility five carrying and the strength four really blitzing holes. Yeah. So like that's a tough decision to make in 15 seconds, isn't it? To be fair. It really is. Okay, so we've uh, we've basically gone with an eye cage here, which is considering the position we were in, not bad. But of course, considering sadly the guard. one had two guards on it already, three guards. On it, so this is uh, easy to strip. die. The strip moves it. Oh, where is this ball going? You can be my wingman anytime. I mean, I'd say that's about as good as the uh, the chaos could have hoped for. It's in three tackle zones. Yeah, but he, he hasn't the, used his blitz yet, has he? No. And the tree rooting is also good for the Chaos. Okay, sweet. But, I mean, the Elves can always still try a pick up, even in three tackle zones. Uh, just bouncing it to somewhere else is not that bad a result for them. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I thought you might have done for the. I thought you might have done a blitz on the Claw Pommer or. You know, either to. Either to no, no, he couldn't because he's got a guard there. Either to scatter it or just get it 2D, but okay, that's that's interesting. Went for the pickup. Yeah, like I said, I didn't hate that. I mean, it puts an elf at risk, but anywhere the ball bounced was probably going to be better for the elves. Um, and sure enough, it's it's landed in the roots of that tree. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, elf, for the massive raid. Glorious. Yeah, it was it was it was a bit wild, wasn't it? The uphill. It was a bit crazy. Get some dub. Rerolled them into a pal. Yep. Not choosing to follow up there and put another tackle zone on the ball. I... Maybe he's being Not burned sure by the tree. Having everyone on the tree, he didn't want it to happen again. <laughs> But yeah, this is getting tricky now, isn't it? Because, of course, if Nick can scatter this and get a good bounce, he can be away. Oh, well, he had that guy left. Oh! I mean, the pickup works, but the dodge out fails. Okay, the ball's in three tackle zones. That's right. It's still a 50% pickup, though, with an AG5. Yeah, and scatters possible. Yeah, a scatters, or there's ways of chaining at least one of those out, or... He's going for the sky here, isn't he? Yep. Well, not if he gets a ball now. 
Yeah, doesn't get it, but uh, you know, reduce those uh, minuses to two on the pickup. I just, yeah. And in it comes. Right, here comes the AG. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? That's nice. Yeah, yeah lovely. Two plus leap, two plus dodge. Two plus pickup. Double die on the uh, on the hit, and then a two plus pickup. Um, I mean, it's simple. It's, you know, it's lovely to be elves, isn't it? And again, <laughs> the rooted tree relevant again, uh, which is great use of the position from Nick. We've seen that throughout this game so far. Really, really good on his position. Yeah. Yep, even a rooted tree is still is still a strength six dude that you can't really do anything to. <laughs> it's no. pretty great. Oh, he's killed. But now, you know. Mankis has got to do something to get this back, hasn't he? And what does he do? Maybe the play was to uh, a 5 plus dodge in and hit the ball on two dice with a tackle, you know, instead of making that block yeah. to remove the random dude. Again, if, uh, I'm a great believer that when things are going bad, sometimes you need to take the bigger risk that is going to change things. I mean, he did there. Fair enough. Yeah. It didn't work. It was only a... Um, 75% chance of that uh, that player getting in there, I think. It was, yeah. So he had a higher chance to get in. And, you know, more, much more chance of working without a reroll, probably. But I think less chances overall than hitting with a tackler or a wrestler. Yeah, yeah. And Nick does the pass, the catch. Had the game. Yep. I mean, I'd love to say that there's ways that the Chaos can uh, sort this out, and there are, but it's, it's almost certainly not going to happen. There's not enough Elves removed to really feel that a two-turn and then some sort of wonderful uh, kickoff result is going to change this. Yeah. I think it's done. Nick's played fantastically, used his, posi his pieces and his positions really well, even managed to get the tree relevant on both drives when it looked like it wasn't going to be. Yeah. Uh, came for the ball at the right time, spotted that weakness in the Wenger Wenger bus. Where there was a way in, um, only taking a, a two plus and a three plus to suddenly have himself two die on the ball. And when you've got elves, enough elves to just mess up that picture. If you get the ball bouncing around, there's always a good chance it's going to turn out badly for the other team. And so it did. Yeah, absolutely. I guess you can say that Mank has probably slipped up on that turn when he did dodge all those warriors out, but didn't fill the cage in. Yeah, he yeah. I mean, I, I liked him, him, you know, solving the problem of those. Chaos Warriors, all four of them, uh, as Muppet pointed out, I was missing one hidden behind the other on the tree. All four Chaos Warriors were marginalised away from the rest of the team. He solved that problem by uh, by blitzing the right piece to create the gap, but then they didn't come streaming back towards the ball, and I think that's probably, I mean, a mistake. I have to say it, Jim, it's not just a, a choice, I think that was wrong. Yeah. Oh, and the perfect defence here, meaning that He's not even getting the monstrous line of scrimmage he would have liked. Now the elves are right up in his face, preventing a, a two-turner push here down any flank. Yep. This was over, and it's now even more over. <laughs> yep. He's got... There's some people... There's some wood elves on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Now, many times I've seen... Uh, Mank is doing some, some lovely coaching. I think he's very, very talented as a coach. But uh, I think here there's just been at times uh, a slight hoping that somehow the mighty blow is, is going to remove elves. And when it wasn't doing so, perhaps we needed a slightly riskier game plan. And the problem with that is you end up looking a fool when it doesn't work. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm happy to lose 8 nil and 1 nil. That's the same to me. Yeah, I mean he wasn't lucky, right? He only made two cars, but both you yep. know he's used two apples, Kadenik. So only two cars over over this many turns. It is unlucky, whichever way you slice it. Definitely, and remove and losing those two uh, two pieces at the very start of the Wood Elf drive. Yeah, and they do anything about that so much harder. Yep. Um, but again, there was that five plus dodge in that. I mean. It, it mo almost certainly wouldn't have changed anything, but it had a better chance to. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Just a few little equity shifts. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Damn fault force. Damn I'm, fault force and his equity shifting. Oh, don't. I mean, I'm sure that had the opportunity been there, Mankers would have put some fouls in. But of course, to do that, you've got to have elves to hit, hit the elves, and get them onto the floor. You haven't seen a lot of that. Yep. Yeah, he's been on the back foot, hasn't he, right from the start? Like, you know. Um... Yeah, absolutely. This is. It's one of those games that. I mean, yeah, we can poke a little hole here and say perhaps this and perhaps that, but. You just looking at this from the chaos point of view, it was bleak from the start and it just kept getting bleaker, didn't it? Yeah. And then when those two line of scrimmages produced absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, very, very hard to keep your morale up and think there's you know, ways to make good things happen. Yeah. Nick might get the cheeky 3-0 here, mightn't he? Narian-like. <laughs> yes, a... that of course, uh, definitely toxic showboating. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a bad idea because the last thing you want to do is give up an extra LOS for three SPPs. Yeah, I, I don't want to um, counter that, Jim, but I'm going to because, of course, this was the Chaos Drive, so uh, he could score on turn 16 and not face it. He could, yes, he could, but... Uh, but if he scored on 15, he, he would. Right. And he doesn't really have three scum to put there. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want the tree facing another Claw Mighty if it, if it could avoid it. Yeah. So he'd probably just put three elves up there. He's I'm not sure if he's got three, he doesn't mind dying, so... <laughs> he's just going to make a foul here, he's not even trying to pick up the ball yet. Oh, he is, is he? Is he? he is going to pick up the yeah, ball. He is going for the ball, which is, is nice, because, you know, there is an opponent for Gdanik next, and it's... I mean, I, I heard Flicky talking, I think I caught the very end of this in the morning as I was getting up. And I think he was talking about um, you know, how when the game's done, he stops hitting things and stops fouling. He feels that's the honourable way. I feel to some degree you owe it to your opponent's next opponent. Yeah. You know, to play each 16 turns as hard as you possibly can, because... Gdanik faces someone next, and, and that person may have had an incredibly hard game. Yeah, that's, that's true. Plus, you know, if someone's beaten me, then, uh, then Sodom, I want their pieces dead. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Whilst I'm not one to rage, I'm also not that Zen that I'm just going to go, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> this is fine. Oh my god, he might go for the three now. Uh, he is, and he's, uh, <laughs> he yep, <laughs> he's got his pal. <laughs> Oh, ball in the crowd. Nuffle's saying no. It's no. go back. It goes back. No, it's saying yes. Nuffle's saying there you are. Have it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and rather perfectly, he's now stalled up on the line. Because uh, yeah. as we said, he probably didn't want to score this turn. He really wants to go in next turn. Make his knocks another elf over, but uh, no bueno. Nothing doing on the Kaz dice for him this game. No. Being very rough. So, again, while we can pick holes, I'm not sure I really want to this match. I, I think this was, um, this was destined in the stars. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's... it's yeah. <laughs> It's like just an average game of Blood Bowl, isn't it? Where there's a few things that could have been done differently or whatever. Oh, I mean, there always is, isn't there? Yeah. I, I don't think anyone could claim that uh, with my backing they've coached a perfect game of Blood Bowl. Well, I've had a couple. The old pre-match concession. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but when he gets yeah. MVP on that guy anyway to level him. <laughs> Fantastic. So, yeah. Well, everything's coming up. Good day. Incredible. Certainly strong favourites now in the last eight. Um, I, I, there's not a lot left in the chalice that you'd put as as equal on a you know man for man basis as that Wood Elf team. So uh, and certainly, if he gets dice like that, 
doesn't matter what you throw against them. It could be a team of space marines. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that was that was you know hit like a wet noodle, didn't he? Man, kids, that game, and he was you know if you if you have those Kaz dice, he actually made eighteen AV bricks on the end of the screen, but it it, did, it certainly just he did nothing. Did he did two Kaz in the over over the sixteen turns? That's just not a load a, a lot of stuns, but nothing that really seemed to uh, arrest the Wood Elf drives. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think he can, you know, sit happy knowing that I'm not sure there was much that could have been done to change that outcome. No, yeah. Not Sometimes not. it's just not to be. I'm not sure there's any point raging about that. If you've done what you think you can do, if you've put the team on there and tried what's come to mind and it hasn't worked, then it hasn't worked. Yep. And there you go. So, congratulations, Kadenik. Commiserations, Mankis. Thank you very much, PC, for the core cast. Thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.